gonna tell you right now. So you could on a gloomy afternoon. He is to get the perfect temperature. Three co-workers bonding over the rush of the high. I feel really good. It has a lot of medicinal qualities. And for consumers, pot prices are another reason to smile. Since legalization, prices have dipped every single month. Enjoy. Statewide, a gram of pot is now about $7 on average, compared to $20 in 2014 when the first pot stores opened. My brother from Miami is visiting today, and so we're doing some marijuana tourism. These siblings are checking out Diego Palacier in Soto, an upscale pot store. It's like a boutique, getting to come in here and look at the packaging and look at the different strains. But even here, you can find low prices. High quality marijuana insiders say goes for half of what it would cost in the black market. Consumers may be loving the low prices, but some pot farmers say the industry is in trouble. And it all boils down to, they say, an overproduction of marijuana compared to the number of retail stores. That is going to be a recipe for disaster. Timothy McCormack took Q13 News deep into the crops on his Chelan pot farm several years ago. I'm inspired by these things. That inspiration now muted. The wholesale price of marijuana is so low that it's hard to even produce it, and that's going to have ripple effects in the market. McCormick says he's not in the green. He's actually on the verge of shutting down. He says as more farmers become financially desperate, some may be tempted to sell off crops to the black market. If they're barely making it, then that incentivizes that backdoor problem. He blames the state for what he calls an unbalanced system with 1,200 licenses carved out for pot farms versus 520 for retail stores. But the state's Liquor and Cannabis Board says there is no evidence of diversion. What's clear is that no one knows exactly for sure um, the impact of price. And so we are re-engaging um, our consultant. We make adjustments all the way, but we're certainly not going to decrease the number of licensees. But McCormick believes if enough pot farms go out of business, consumers will pay more. You're going to end up with a small group of people um, that control the entire market. His solution to the problem is to allow pot farms to operate like wineries. Here's an opportunity for you to take some home and try it. You know, and that's what the wine industry does, and it seems to work out really well. The idea is to increase marijuana outlets without building more brick and mortar shops like Diego Pellicier. I wouldn't be against that because that's needed to be able to progress the industry to where we want to see it, right? But Alejandro Canto, who owns Diego Palacier, still worries McCormick's idea is too risky right now with the Fed scrutinizing the state's industry. Receipts in the bag, enjoy. Canto's idea right. instead is to open up centralized distribution centers like the alcohol industry has. That could help lower transportation and marketing costs for everyone, especially the struggling farmer. There's such uh, an overflow of product in the state, it's driven the prices straight down. After paying taxes, Kanto says the profits are not what he dreamed. Am I making millions walking out? No, absolutely not. Uh, did I think I was when I came in? Yeah, I said this is a home run. Woo! Nowhere near it. But McCormick says retailers are still the winners in this volatile business. <laughs> Ooh, that one's quite lovely. An industry that's experiencing growing pains and attracting more consumers every day. I wouldn't have imagined anything to do with how I see it right now, but I'm glad to be a part of it. In Seattle, Hannah Kim, 